You know, at some point, you gotta go out there and say, what if the Red Wings actually do it? What if Dylan Larkin goes all Henrik Zetterberg on us and drags this team into the postseason? Because, hey... Take a look at the Red Wings and their recent stretch of games over here. They've been on a pretty big heater. Calgary, 5-2 yesterday. Edmonton, 5-4 the other day. Back-to-back -back wins against the Canucks. Another win against Calgary. And then you have a loss thrown in there against the Oilers and then the Islanders too. But there are some winning ways that the Wings have sort of established the past little while here. And it all starts out with the Western Canadian teams, oddly enough. But in the span of the Wings doing as well as they have been doing, we did mention it off the top. It's Dylan Larkin, who in his past, what is that, one, two, three, four games has a total of 10 points. He's gotten himself five goals and five assists in his last four, which is absolutely nuts. If you just take a look at Larkin back from the All-Star break, you include the two games that he had earlier on, then it brings his total up to a 12 point in six game marker, which is still very, very good. But Larkin has been on such a heater this season that now he's at 55 points, 53 games played. The recent stint has pushed him over a point per game. He is on pace for 84 points on the season. 32 goals, 52 assists is the projection. And you still have all the two-way play, the leadership qualities, how Larkin is valuable to the team in other ways as well. And as a result, you had the NHLPA saying this earlier today, leading the league in points for the week with 10. Dylan Larkin netted two game-winning goals and recorded four straight multi-point games to help the Wings extend their win streak to five on his way to being named the NHLPA's Player of the Week. This line, Larkin, Bertuzzi, you got Robbie Fabry up there too, it's been pretty good the past little while here, and just the amount of production you're getting out of all these guys, just the chemistry, it's worked out so well. But now, with this in mind, we have to bring ourselves up a topic that's sort of was discussed last video with a different player on a different team, but is in a completely different stratosphere of magnitude in Detroit. Because with the Red Wings doing how they're doing, with the Dylan Larkin sweepstakes picking up here, you got yourselves a guy who has really bolstered his team's play ever since that All-Star break, and as a result, the Wings are, what is that? Only two points out of the final wild card. They've got 54 games played, 60 points. The Washington Capitals have 62 points and 57 games played. So the Wings have three games in hand over the Capitals. And they're down by two points, which is absolutely insane when you think about just where this team was a few months ago. And so now, with Dylan Larkin being as good as he is, with him leading this team to all these wins and potentially sneaking into the playoffs, knock on wood, anything happens, whatever, whatever, you gotta ask yourself, does that go out there and validate whatever dollar amount that he is asking for in these negotiations with Stevie Y? We had seen the reported numbers out there. The Larkin camp wants nine. Eiserman and his party are not willing to go too high over eight. And there's all this conversation going around about that last five hundred, four hundred, three hundred thousand dollars ish. And if you really wanted to map out, oh, why is that such a big deal? Two hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's the thing. It's over eight years. Two hundred thousand dollars multiplied out by eight. That's an extra one point six million dollars in negotiation here. So when you think about it like that, yeah, there's a reason why Dylan Larkin and his associates would probably want to negotiate that further to try and squeeze out every last dollar they could, especially since Larkin is a valuable player. It's just, with Larkin's play right now, it's almost like he's showing off to Stevie Y, yeah, look, I'm a nine million dollar player. Like, I can get two points a game ever since coming back from the All-Star break. I can hold this team accountable, lead this team to multiple wins in a row, and we can squeak into the playoffs, Steve. We can do this. And, of course, that's a really colloquial way of looking at it, but at the same time, you can't deny with how this team's been playing the past little while. And so I think it's really starting to spell a lot more positivity for Larkin and the conversations around him, because I think it's only really people in Detroit and Red Wings fans specifically that feel like Larkin does deserve that nine plus million dollar price tag. I know a lot of people would look at Barzal and say, wait a minute, Barzal is also a speedy forward, but he had an 80 something point year. Larkin hasn't had that yet. And I get it. You could say that 
for career highs. There definitely is no competition there. But like Larkin, in my opinion, has been a much better player just overall two way as well. And Barzal's point production has sort of declined the past little while here with the system that he plays with in New York. Sure, Bo Horvat's going to change that because that's a goal scorer coming over. But uh, for now, right now, just looking at Larkin versus Barzal, I could totally understand if you wanted to give Larkin somewhat of a similar price tag, but if CBY really doesn't want to do it, then I guess CBY just wouldn't really want to do it. We've already talked about this, but he did do a chunk of that negotiating for the Lightning on some of their nine plus million dollar contracts, 8.5 in Stamkos' case, so there's a lot of capability here. Larkin can play hockey and CVY can negotiate, so we'll see where things end up going, but right now, based off of the past few weeks worth of play for the Wings, it would be quite surprising to me if the ultimate conclusion is no agreement reached, Larkin has to get traded or something elsewhere. Because if there was already no hope, like if Stevie Y already thought that he wasn't able to get this done, Larkin probably should have been gone a while ago. Just saying. Now we know there is no rush to get things done and everything, but at the end of the day, Michigan boy, Michigan University guy, grew up loving the wings, etc, etc. This is a story of a guy that both the wings and Larkin would want to stay in Detroit. I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to see Larkin leave the team over what is essentially four or five million dollars extra on that contract that's going to be an eight-year deal, or a seven-year deal if he goes to free agency. Then you have yourselves all the other trade options that had been sort of there. Bo Horvat got a whole bunch of stuff, and a lot of Wings fans I saw said, yeah, no, thank goodness Steve Eiserman didn't pull the trigger on that to try to get Bo Horvat and replace Larkin that way. But I don't know, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about how Dylan Larkin's recent play has elevated his monetary demand status in these negotiations with Steve Eiserman, because obviously Larkin is playing some of the best hockey he's played, like ever, period, like, just by itself, he's never really been this good before, we know how good he can be, but this is sort of another gear, that all-star break, man, it's kind of rubbing off on him, isn't it? But either way, how have things changed in your eyes from the Larkin negotiations and that process from a few weeks ago up until today? Do you think Larkin just has even more of a case now to get that 9 plus AAV? Do you think Steve Eiserman is going to waver in his preference and sort of creep up those dollars a little bit? Do you think this ends up becoming more of a standstill because Larkin is this good and Eiserman doesn't want to budge? Or do you think this is probably a good thing because if he gets more money, it means he sticks around. It means that you're probably more enticed to seeing him perform better over the next few years. So there are a lot of layers to this, isn't there? But I want you to tell me in the comments all your thoughts and opinions about Larkin, about Raymond, not Raymond, about the Red Wings, about Eiserman and everything and the like. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.